Lord, hallelujah. Let somebody shout hallelujah there. Amen. You are welcome once again to your program, Premarital Counseling Made Simple. And I'm still your counselor, Pastor Dr. Mrs. Cecilia Gemisola Obishake. Welcome to today's program. Shall we pray? Father, in the name of Jesus, we are grateful for being among the living to witness today. Thank you for bringing us again to learn at your feet. Father, we are here. Please speak to us. Give us heart that we understand. Give us the grace to be hearers and doers of this word. And we pray that our marriages will fulfill your purposes for it. And we shall have godly homes in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, our Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Uh, last time we spoke about the purposes of the Christian marriage. And I told you that God created marriage to solve the problem of loneliness, to make man and woman to fellowship together, to have Christian uh, who, I mean, lineage, have Christian children, and also for the two of them, to be able to work with God, to propagate the kingdom of God on earth. Today, we want to continue a still part of premarital counseling. We want to talk about preparation for marriage, the real marriage. How do we prepare for it? You need to prepare for marriage. Just as you prepare for many things in life, you need to prepare for marriage. And I shall be reading from Luke chapter 14. I will read from verse 28 to 31. Luke, gospel according to St. Luke, chapter 14. I'm reading from verse 28 to 20. It says, For which of you, intending to build a tower, seated not down first, and counted the cost, whether he have sufficient to finish it, less happily after he had laid the foundation and is not able to finish it, all that behold it begin to mock him, saying, this man began to build and was not able to finish. Or what king, going to make war against another king, seated not down first and consulted whether he be able with 10,000 to meet him that cometh against him or with 20,000, that is the power of preparation. You need to consciously prepare for your marriage. You know, the Bible tells us so there is time for everything, a time to be born and a time to die. And there's also between the time to be born and between uh, that and the time to die, there is time for marriage. You need to prepare for it. Actually, people say, when you fail to prepare, then you are preparing to fail. Like we had in the Bible, if you are going to go to war, you have to sit down. How many people are you going with? What, are, what instrument of war are you going to use? Do you know the number of the people you are going to fight with? These are part of preparation. So also, in marriage, we need to prepare. Now, we are told in the Bible, as I said, that there is time for everything. I want to let you know, people, that this marriage we are talking about, we prepare for it consciously and unconsciously. Consciously when we are underage, I mean, unconsciously when we are underage, let me say between, even from the womb, right from the womb, to the time you are born, toddler, you become a, uh, a, 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 a girl, a boy, you are preparing for it unconsciously until you now become of age. Maybe from late teenage years, you begin to be conscious of yourself, of your physical changes. 
then a time will come where you feel, oh, I think I'm ready for marriage. We prepare for marriage unconsciously from, our, from birth to the age of marriage. Um, you know, by the grace of God, the life of every human being is a circle. It is in a circle. You want to say we start from the time when the egg is fertilized, when the, the, the sperm of the husband meets with the egg of the wife in sexual copulation. Life begins. That's when we start. And from fertilization, you become a fetus, it's a, a, a baby, small baby. You become a fetus, and from there, when the time comes, af after nine months, you'll be born as a baby. I want to let you know, I want to create this awareness that right from the time when this, the, the sperm of the, womb, of, the, of, of the man and the egg of the woman met, marriage for that baby has started. The preparation for marriage has started. Ask me how. If the, this baby has come as expected in the marriage contest, it's going to be the joy of husband and wife. And you can see, I mean, you may not see it, but that baby, as the baby is growing, you know, from maybe from a four months to six months, that joy will be reflected in the way the mother carries he or she. Now, unfortunately, if the uh, pregnancy is accidental, I'm just using that word, God, there ought not to be any accidental pregnancy in Christian marriage. You don't go there. You don't go having sex until you are prepared to marry and until after you have been married. If that baby came when he or she was not supposed to come, hmm, I'm telling you, the preparation for he or she is, is our own marriage is also started because that sadness, that rejection, that unwantedness will be transferred from the mother to the baby. And during the uh, growth you know, stages in the womb, it will affect this baby. If the, if the mother is happy, the baby will be a happy baby. If the mother is always complaining, thinking of how he's going to, you know, maybe evacuate the baby, talking to herself, the baby is getting it. The baby is getting it. And by the time this baby is born, if he's born into a family between husband and wife, wow, the joy of having a baby, the baby will feel it. The baby will feel accepted. The baby will feel loved. And you know, the opposite to the situation. If the baby is born outside marriage, the bitterness, the sorrow, the regret will be transferred to the baby. And of course, when the baby is growing in the atmosphere of love, he is preparing for his own marriage because the baby will see the joy, the love in daddy to mommy, the love from mommy to daddy, and he's growing with that you know, idea that, oh, marriage, is a place where you show love, where you are accepted, where you, know, you take care of each other. And then this baby will become a child going to school. If the baby is born into a family, the father is taking care, the mother is taking care. It's not just left for the mother alone or for the father alone to take care. You are preparing this baby or this child for his or her own marriage as well and the, the baby or the child now becomes adolescent, wow. What has been sown about marriage into the life, into the physical, spiritual, emotional being of this child will affect his idea about marriage. And then, of course, it will influence him or her. Let's talk about him now because of this gene I mean, genetic issue. If a boy, has grown up in a lovely, in a caring family. The boy has seen the father taking care of the, of the mother, seeing them loving each other, 
seeing them sitting down together, talking, laughing together, I'm telling you, that image of marriage as a joyful, you know, thing is already established. And he will be looking forward to having the same thing. And unfortunately, if it is the opposite, we are right from the beginning, from the pregnancy. The pregnancy was a mistake. So the, baby, uh, the mother was forced on the father. The father had to marry because he impregnated the mother. Wow. The, that hatred, that unwantedness, you, you're, you're, you already got it. And growing between husband and wife who don't have love for each other, who are just, you know, meet, uh, sleeping under the same roof, no joy, no, no, no kindness towards each other. The, the boy has gotten it. And if the, if, the, if the father is the type that shows his own manliness by beating up the wife, because some people, they feel that is how to show how to be a man, that boy has taken it. He's not written, but it's there in his brain. So he will grow up. He will look for a way to show to his own wife too what fa the father showed to the mother. Brethren, why am I saying this? We need to be careful. We need to be careful. We prepare for marriage unconsciously, right from childbirth until you are of age and you yourself go into it. And what you have grown with will affect your marriage. Except God intervenes, you become born again and you know, the Holy Spirit takes control and erases all those negative things you have seen right from your youth or right from your childhood until that stage. So we need to be careful, people. Of course, your adolescent you know, stage we affect your adulthood. How many adults are there today? Single adults, single you know, unmarried mother, single unmarried you know, father, or married, divorced, or separated. All those are not God's plan for marriage, but they happen anyway. That's where you need to be careful and prepare for marriage before you go into it. And of course, adulthood, joyful childhood will lead to joyful, you know, adolescent life. You know, you marry in love too because you've seen your parents married in love. You look for that joy you used to see at home in your parents. You look for that acceptance you know, that you see between them, and then you go into your own too. Consciously, they will affect you. They will affect you. And then your adulthood, it, God forbid, if you lived with a one single parent, single, I mean, father or single mother, it will also show. It will affect you. And your adulthood, whatever happens there, will also affect your old age and also to your time of death. So between the birth and the death of a human being, marriage controls, marriage has a role to play. If your life is going to be sweet, if your life is going to be enjoyable, if you are going to fulfill the plan and purpose of God for life, your marriage will determine it. Your marriage will influence it. I pray that God will give us the understanding of this so that we know that marriage is not just, oh, I'm 18, I'm 25, I need to marry. You have been prepared for it unknowingly. And what you have gotten, the idea you have gotten unknowingly will surface when you are about to marry and it will influence your marriage. Except you stick to God and be guided by his word and by the help of the Holy Spirit. So preparation for marriage, be careful. What you are doing now will affect your next stage in life. It is what you sow that you will reap. It is what you sow that you will reap. Every young child there, every adolescent there, keep yourself pure. Because the life you lead as an adult, as an adolescent, as a fine girl, fine boy, will affect your marriage. If you live holy, you keep yourself, you will enjoy it because you will enjoy the, the fruit of your labor in marriage. If you are promiscuous, I mean promiscuous, and you just do whatever you like, wait. You better change because you will meet the consequences in marriage. 
And that's how we pre you prepare, whatever you prepared for is what you are going to have. So I'm talking about this because I want you to be well prepared for marriage before you go into it. Because failing to prepare is preparation to fail. And you know, when we talk of marriage, 25% of your life is lived in the formative years. You know, you form the, the preparing for it as a single person, 25%, maybe from your day one till you are 17, 18, 20, you know, your teenage years, early, early, you know, 20, late 20s and early 30s, okay? The next 25, your creative years is spent in marriage. And that is between 24, 21st to 40 because of time now. The next stage, I know, the, uh, 25, 40, uh, year 41 to 60 is consolidating years. And then 61 to 80, the last 25, your retirement years, you will enjoy whatever fruit you have sown in marriage. So you need to be prepared. How? Physically, marriage is not for boys and girls. Did you hear me? You must be ready for it. You, if you are a boy, you should be at least between 23 to 25. And if you are a girl, between 21 to 23. Because what you do at that stage will influence your later li life. For example, we have young ones going into marriage so early, 14, 15, and they have problems giving birth. Some, as a result of that, because they got married very early, when they are going to go into birth, they have complications and they begin to have problems. At times, these problems will make them to be abandoned by the so-called husband that have put them into early marriage and will abandon them after. So you need to be careful. So physically, before you begin to think about marriage, you must attain, if you're a boy, the age of 23 and 25, and if you're a girl, from 21, you know, and above. By that time, you are physically prepared. As a girl, you've started menstruating. As a boy, you must have been having your nocturnal emission. You are strong. You are able to do as you, you are expected to do, you know, as a man. Spiritually, that is the most important one. You need to be born again. Marriage is spiritual. God himself is a spirit. And if you are going to enjoy marriage, you have to be born again. Because of all the love, it is the love of God that sustains marriage. Agape love. So you need to be born again. And socially, you must be sociable. You must be sociable. You must be able to respect another person. You must not be selfish. You must be able to take decision by yourself. You must have some ability to lead, to lead yourself, to lead somebody, your wife, your children. And you must be socially acceptable. You don't just behave anyhow. For example, as we said earlier, if you feel marriage, as far as a woman is concerned, when the woman is married or you're going to marry her, so that she can wash your clothes, she can prepare your food, and that is marriage for you, you, are, you will have problems socially because that is not the purpose of marriage. That is part of what you gain, but it's not the main thing. You will not behave well at home. You will use your wife as a maid, and there will be a problem. So you have to be socially, you know, acceptable. You must be devoid of error. So many Young ones are having ideas that are erroneous. They are against the plan and purpose of God. You must be spiritually born again. The word of God guiding you. You being filled with the Holy Spirit. Then I tell you, you will have a good marriage by the grace of God. Because you will be obedient to God, reading his word and being guided by his word. Remember, it is written. How can a young man or a young woman... How can you lead your life successfully? By taking heed to the word of God. Said, your word have I hid in my heart so that I will not sin against you. Of course, emotionally, you must be emotionally balanced. You must be a, cry, a, 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 a child of God controlled by the Holy Spirit. You must be stable. Not somebody, little thing you are crying, 
little thing you are shouting. No, you must be composed emotionally. You must be calm and collected because the word of God is in you. The Holy Spirit is in you. Christ is in you, the hope of glory. The Spirit of God is the one leading you. So whatever happens, you know your God is in control. Hallelujah. Amen. And also, you need to be prepared educationally. My son, don't marry an illiterate. My, my wife, I mean, my, my daughter, don't be an illiterate wife. And don't marry a man that cannot read and write. You may ask me, the, oh, 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 what's she talking about? Yes, even at this century, we still have people who cannot read and write. Money is not everything. You need to know how to read and write. You must be literate. You should be able to communicate in your social, I mean, official language of your country. If you are in, in Nigeria, you should be able to speak English and write in English. Because these days, that is the passport. Education is the passport. You need to be educated. Don't marry an illiterate person. Of course, financially, you know, your educational level will affect your finances. It's, it's good for you to go to school. The Bible says wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. And with all that you can get, get understanding. Acquire skill. It will help you financially. Because my daughter, that man, yes, he's good, but has no, you know, no source of income, no really recognizable source of income. You say, God will do it. Mm -mm. It's like putting an empty pot on the stove and expecting that something, uh, some kind of food will come out of it. No. The person you are going to marry, or if you are ready for marriage, you must be financially independent. Of course, you must be mentally balanced. You must be balanced. You must not be somebody with problems. Now, listen to me. We have different categories of sicknesses. There are sicknesses that when you, if you fall sick, you are treated, and then it's over. But there are some sicknesses that, you know, will affect your mental ability. If you have such a sickness, you need to wait. You need to be cured. You need to allow God to intervene because marriage with somebody who is mentally ill will not work well. It's a lot of struggle and troubles that you don't deserve. So you must be mentally balanced for marriage. Hallelujah. So my, 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 my son over there, my daughter over there, you must be prepared for marriage physically, spiritually, mentally, financially. When you are prepared, then you can know that when you go into it, you will have no regret. And I pray for you that the Lord will prepare you. You will not be dependent on mommy. Your mommy can, your dad and mom can give you money, but you yourself must, must have a source of income that will sustain you and your wife. And of course, children will come that will sustain you and your family. The Lord will bless you as you prepare in the mighty name of Jesus. Now, in conclusion, I want to ask, how old are you? Because these days, you see uh, boys of, uh, of 14, 15, they say they are engaged. They are having a guy friend. That is not of God. We are going to talk about, about that later. You need to be prepared for marriage before you go into it. And the Lord will prepare you. You shall not make first you know, steps. You won't take first steps into marriage so that you will not rush out of it in the mighty name of Jesus. God bless you for listening today. We will continue again. I want you to know that God loves you. Jesus loves you. And if you have not given your life to Jesus, please do that. And you want to pray with me? You want to say, Lord Jesus, I thank you for what I have had. Please help me. Take my life. I give my life to you. Fill me with your Holy Spirit and prepare me for marriage. And if you have been married, Holy Spirit, please have your way. Take control of my marriage. I want to be prepared. I don't want to fail. Help me in my marriage. And I pray for all of us over there that the Lord will help us. We will not fail in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, our Father. In Jesus' precious name, we pray. Hallelujah. God bless you. See you again in Jesus' name. Bye. When we walk with the Lord in the light.